Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platform in Unity. In this video, we're going to add the finishing touches to our basic movements. Let's get started. So our character has pretty good horizontal movement, but we want to be able to add a little more customization to it in terms of how we decelerate and how he turns around. And we want to put it in a manner in the editor so that we can adjust it to what we think will be the best feel for the player of the game. So let's get started by clicking on our Fabio script. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add three new variables. We're going to add three private floats. The very first one is going to be called release deceleration X. And for now, we're going to set that at 0.25 F. And like I said before, we're going to set this up in a way so you can change these variables to whatever it is you like in the editor. But these are just ones I, I kind of like how these feel from working them, excuse me, working with them before. So then we're going to create our second private float. And that's going to be called skid deceleration x. And that's going to equal to 0.5f. And like before, because we're doing with floats, we want to put an f after our number. And the last one is going to be called skid. turn around in the x direction and that's going to be 3.5 f so let's fix this so there isn't a space in our variable name and then we're going to come down here to this if statement we created earlier that moves our character and at the end of it we're going to add an else if statement i'm going to put a parentheses and then we're going to put current speed x is greater than zero. So else if the current speed x is greater than zero, which basically translates into if we are moving, because that's when we want to slow down. We don't want it to slow down when we're standing still, obviously. So we're going to say that our current speed x is going to equal decrease within bound. And this is going to be a new function we're going to create down below, similar to the increase within bound one right here. It's going to be very similar in structure. And like the other one, we're going to pass three variables through it. The first one is going to be the current speed X. The second one is going to be our new release deceleration X. And the last one is going to be zero. And oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back. And where's our function? There it is. So I want to put a semicolon at the end of that, actually. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to create our function right after this one. So we're going to create a function very similar to this one. It's going to be, or it's going to return a float just like the other one. And then it's going to be called decrease within bound, like we named it earlier. And it's going to have very similar names to the values we're going to pass through. The first one's going to be a float I'm sorry, the first one's going to get, yes, so the first one's going to be a float called value or val. Then we're going to have delta and then comma. And then the last one is going to be the different one. And it's going to be called minimal val and it's going to equal zero. So to set up this function, what we're going to do is we're going to have val equals minus equal delta i'm going to semicolon here we, we incremented uh our value by delta but and, and we, we added to it but here it's going to be subtracted and then we're going to say if our value is less than minimum val so if 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 it goes below zero basically because if we're moving we want to just stop at zero. We don't want it to be negative, obviously. So if the value goes below zero, we want to reset it as the minimum value, which is zero. So val is going to equal minimum val. And then like before, it's a float function. Remember, the void functions don't return anything. So up here, we said it had to return a float. So this one does too. And this one has to return value also. So now we're going to go ahead and hit save 
Actually, we're going to go up here and I'm going to show you a little bit of how this is working. So over here, we're going to put debug.log. And then inside our debug.log, it's going to be current speed X. So debug.log is going to actually, I'll just hit play and show you inside the editor. I'm sorry, hit save and show you inside the editor. So we go over here to our editor. So we want to print something to the log is, is we want to print something to the console right here where sometimes we've, excuse me, we've seen errors and these little alerts, you know, that I haven't used these two variables yet, but I can put this debug.log and what I want to print out there, I can print out, uh, you know, if I want a phrase that, that tells me that something's working in this case, I want to see the value of the current speed go down when I release the arrow button or whatever you're using to move your character, whether it's A and D or the left and right arrows. And we should see it being lowered by 0.25. It should be subtracting 0.25, just like this function wants it to. So that's what that's doing. So let's go back over here and then we're going to hit play. And then I'm going to hit move with my arrow. And as soon as I let go of it, Let's go back to the top. Remember our max speed, our max speed was 5.5. That's the fastest we could, we could move. And so that was our max speed. And the minute I, or excuse me, the second I left or I let go of my movement arrows in the X direction, it subtracted 0.25, which is our deceleration X. And it did it every frame. It went to five, 4.7.5 and so on and so forth till it went to zero and it, and it did it that fast. That's how many, that's how fast the frames move. It, you didn't notice it went down that fast. If I were to go ahead and click on the character again and then move him to the right, I let go and he stops, but that happened that quickly because it did it again. So let's go back into our script and let's add our turnaround. Here we have the change direction code that we put in last time, but we're gonna change this up to, excuse me, a little bit to add in our decrease with, excuse me, decrease with inbound so he can sort of keep going and then he'll have a, you know, a deceleration and then he'll turn around and sort of speed up. So to do that, what we want to do is that we want to put an if statement in here and we'll say if current speed X is greater than the skid turnaround speed in the X direction. And then I want to put a bracket there. And what I want to do is actually, I want to take this code and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to cut and then I'm going to paste it back in. All right. And so I still want this to happen. If inside, you know, if we're changing direction and if the current speed is greater than the skid turnaround speed, and I don't think we've had, oh yes, we've had nestled if statements before. So these two things have to happen if he is changing direction and if the current speed is greater than the skid turnaround speed. So we have our, our max speed is 5.5. And if we're, you know, running at our max speed, it should be greater than this. Then the other things will go into action. You know, our move direction X is going to equal to negative face direction X, but also we want to be able to change our current speed X or add a deceleration to our turn around here to give it a little more of that physics feel. So we're going to add our decrease within bound function, and then we're going to run our current speed X. And then the next one is going to be skid deceleration X. And then the last one's going to be equal to zero. So we're applying the same deceleration concept to our, to our character when he turns around. And then we're going to take this actually, which I think I put in the wrong spot last time. My apologies. We're going to cut that and we're going to put that because this is what we want to happen. If he is changing direction, we want, you know, his ability to decelerate. And then if he's not doing that, then, you know, we just want this, the movement direction X and the face direction X to equal it and be the same. So let's go up here and hit save and let's go right back into Unity, let's just clear this out. Actually, I don't need that debug.log anymore. Clogging up the console. So we'll just get rid of that. Let it compile one second. And now we're gonna push play. And now I'm gonna go to the right 
and I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go to the left. And as you can see, he kind of has this little slide when he turns. He doesn't quite turn on point anymore. And, you know, that's that's what I wanted. And if you don't want that, you know, you can change the numbers up to, you know, have him decelerate a little faster to be able to turn around quicker. And he should have because this all came together. So, yeah, he has a little bit of a slide, too. And you can change that also. And I'll show you how to set up, you know, to change those numbers right now. So let's go back into our script. And earlier I mentioned how there's public and private, and I kind of just glossed over it really because I kind of just made it as if that if I were to go here to Fabio, that the only thing here that is public and is this move direction X right here to control it, and that it only really meant that, you know, it was out here, uh, just available here in the editor. And that, that is true, but there's more to it than that. A, when we talk about public and private variables or anything in the code, Private also means that, you know, not only will it not appear in the editor, but it's only available here in this script. I cannot access this through another script. And that's what public would also be used for. This means that I would be able to access this float, move direction X, through any other script. But let's say I want to be able to change the numbers here, like I can change this one right here, but I still want it private. So what I would do actually to change that, we're really only interested in these with the numbers right here. I would create a bracket, not that bracket, this bracket. And inside it, I would put the word serialize field. And this will actually make this, let me hit play. Go back into Unity let it compile and now as you can see now i have my public float right here my move direction x but now the minimum walk speed is also here for me to change i can now adjust this to what i want and how i want my character to move but it's still private it's still a private float and cannot be used at all by any other script in this project, which sometimes, or even a lot of times, you may not want. I may just want to this particular variable right here to be used here, and maybe I'll, you know, use a similar name somewhere else. So now I'm just going to go ahead, and we're going to serialize all these variables right here. And next time we'll learn about headers also, because we're going to want to separate things also. So now I can hit save. I, I have now serialized all these variables right here. I can go back into Unity. We'll let this all compile. And now you can go ahead and play with these numbers and see how you want your deceleration, your acceleration, your walk speed. See how you want it to work for how you want your game to feel. Maybe you want your character to run faster. Maybe you want him to accelerate faster. Maybe you want him to decelerate slower or faster or, you know, turn around faster. However you want it to be. So that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon, and a big special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. All links are in the description below. See you next time.